So now we're ready to move on to theme number two. Two, two, two. Are we ready? Let's do this. Okay. Oh, let's see. Karen said, my three-year-old grandson watches Blue's Clues today. He knows what the handy-dandy notebook was. Yeah. Oh, and we had the red chair, the red thinking chair at my house. Mm-hmm. Best, best, best time of life. Loved it. All right. And Sesame Street was still up there, too. Yeah, we definitely still watched Sesame Street and Nora, Dora the Explorer and, oh, all sorts of fun stuff. All right, guys. Theme number two um, is something to learn. And I decided that this would be kind of a, a hybrid. I'm going to show you uh, part of a video. Well, you know, the whole segment from when I did Studio 5. It's a week ago, I think. Um, so some of you may have seen this segment already. We posted it on Facebook, but there were questions about how I ended up finishing these pumpkins. I'm going to show you these fun little pumpkins. So we'll watch the segment together and then I'll go into further detail. You know, the, the when I go on Studio 5, you have about um, a seven minute block to try and get it all in. <laughs> So you have to get in as much as you possibly can in seven minutes. And so sometimes you're not able to go through like all of the details. You are just going as, as fast as you can, right? And also, you you know, one of the challenges of doing Studio 5 is that you are speaking to an audience that aren't necessarily quilters. So you really have to try and decide like, you know, what are some things that I can share that, you know, that anyone despite like it, not having any background knowledge on sewing might be able to do. So that's where I go into sharing how to make pumpkins. And so I thought this might be fun for all of you to watch. We'll watch it together and then we'll come back and I'll show you the final details of how those pumpkins and acorns came together. Sound good? All righty. So let's go ahead. I'm going to share my screen here and let's pull this up. Okay, there we go. Don is asking, what is Studio 5? It is a home and lifestyle show. Um, it is filmed, it's on Channel 5, um, and it's filmed in Salt Lake. And I've been a contributor there for almost 12 years, which is hard to believe, and uh, once a month. Okay, let's take a look, and we'll go from here. At our creative table today, inside, more than outside, I'll say, the fall colors and fall textures, they're starting to emerge. And hey, we have to plan ahead here for you. We have to be a few weeks ahead of the game to keep everyone else inspired. We're dressing the dining room table today for the fall season with an all fabric fall tablescape that's full of contrast, which makes it interesting and keeps it interesting. Fabric artist Chris Thurgood is here. So good to see you, hey, my friend. Hey, How many months has it been? It's been a while. I don't even want to count. I know. But it's I know, so good to see you. to see you. I look at this table and I get really excited. We get to celebrate early here in the studio. What kinds of contrast are you talking about? Well, first of all, you know, just being able to have the cooler temperatures definitely makes you, you know, feel fall. Oh, feel and like you said, you know, if you're a crafter or a quilter or a creator, you got to start now, yeah. right? And so with uh, these different textures, we're looking at, you know, uh, just a variety of textures, whether it's the cotton prints, whether it's velvet or velveteen or linen, you know, all of those together, corduroy would be beautiful, uh, really can help add to... Items that are store bought, uh -huh, right? Uh -huh. And then you throw in a mix of some fabric textures. Okay, okay so okay. here we buy the linen. Yep, that's here's the some linen. linen. Normally a summer fabric, but with the color, Definitely. the chambray, you mm -hmm. fold it into the deeper season. Absolutely. A little bit of yeah. glitter. That was probably a store bought guy. <laughs> right? Absolutely. And here's the velvet that I am loving. Yes, this velvet is so pretty. And what it uh, comes with is, it's, well, it comes on a roll, okay? Just like this. 
and you just roll it out and it's more of a velveteen okay. so it's not as pricey as like a real velvet uh -huh. would be but it still has a very soft subtle luscious feel it has a little shimmer you know depending on where the light is hitting it yeah so it just gives a great texture to it what does this fabric bring or mean for sewers is it is it a finicky fabric is it tough to work it with it is not finicky at all Good. it is so easy your needle's going to go through it like butter and it's just easy Easy. It's not going to shed or um, you know fall apart. You gotta it's say it the wonderful. real way, like butter. Like butter. Exactly. <laughs> there, I need butter. you to play with me. All right, so show us how you did these cute pumpkins. Okay, so the way I did it is. I know this may seem a little strange, but it, rather than, we might think of a pumpkin as starting out as a circle, right? but we're going to actually Finger. start with, Finger. with <laughs> rectangles. In fact, we're going to do two rectangles, bro. Okay. And so I've cut out two rectangles, both the same size. It doesn't matter what size you do. You can make small pumpkins. You make, can make huge, large pumpkins doing the same technique. So what I'm doing is I'm putting right sides together right here. Here. Okay, velveteen on velveteen. Velveteen on top of velveteen. Mm -hmm. And then I'm going to take it to my sewing machine and just do a straight stitch. That's all you have to do. Mm -hmm. And you're going to stitch down both short sides. And I've heard okay. the sewing machine goes through the velveteen like butter. Like butter. Yes. <laughs> okay. mm -mm. Yes. All right. So. Here we have through the magic of television, right? Yes. We have this already done, that this has been sewn down on both sides. This is why I'm Easy an impatient can be. Every, an impatient <laughs> cook and an impatient <laughs> aspiring seamstress because right. like the magic of television, yes. it's done for me right, right here in this <laughs> lightning speed you pace. absolutely okay. can do this though, my friend, because take a look. All I did was two seams. It's created a two. Okay. I turn it right side yeah. out and then oh, I... There it is. Yep, yeah, there it is. And... I'm going to actually now hand stitch this, but okay. don't let that scare you. Um, going around the top and the bottom uh, to, in order to gather it, pull it, and it's going to give you that effect. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And so, you so the know, hand stitching is along the side. Right? It's actually or, uh, along the top and bottom. Oh, the top and bottom. Yeah. Where are you getting so, these little marks? Here, here we go. On the, the side puckering. is afterwards. Oh. We can actually take more thread, pull it on the sides, and cinch it. If you want the cinched, poofy, tufted look. I love that. If you don't mind having just the full look like this, you can do it either way. Because it kind of pleats for you anyway. It, but I exactly. do like that tufted look. That's really I fun. I know. It's kind of fun. So would you believe that I use none other than floss? She's Dental like a floss. little hygiene check, a little sewing project check. Exactly. And everyone's got floss, yeah, right? Yeah, you should. So with <laughs> needle and floss, which is going to be your thread, Oh, is you're going to just go up and down. And why not regular around? thread? Because the floss won't break. You've got to pull this puppy tight, Oh, you know, when you're cinching it up. And so I've already cinched up the bottom. Uh huh. You can see right here. Uh huh. And so I'm just doing along the top now. And again, I'm just running, weaving this needle in and out, in and out, in and out. Okay. Just large stitches. I'm not even trying to measure my stitches. It's just boom, 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 boom. Get it done. Yeah. Right. And then you're going to take your stuffing. We're going to stuff it. Put it in there. Stuff that pumpkin. Right. And then once you're done with that, stuffing it as much as you like, you're just going to take your ends this and is where the floss it up. helps and out. This is, yes, because I, trust me, I've done it with thread before. Yeah. And there's nothing worse than having that break. Who would have thought <laughs> dental floss was the solution? Exactly. And you're not going to see it. But look how tight that goes up. So cute. And so I'm just going to tie it in a knot. And look, she was right. The rectangle became a pumpkin. Mm -hmm. The rectangle became a pumpkin. Pretty yep. sweet, right? So then to make the cute little top, what I did was I added a cinnamon stick, something else mm. that you're going to find. Another texture, mm -hmm. another fall. So motif. we have little cinnamon sticks right here. Uh, you know, you can pick those up at the grocery store, Cute. place it in with a little hot glue and Cute. you are good to go. Okay. I've got about a minute left. I want hey. to point out some other details. I love hey. how you've added the twining and the burlap yes, kind definitely. of fibers. Well, take a look at these little acorns. That was what I wanted to <laughs> ask you about. So cute. The, you know, these are just little acorn caps. You can find them on the ground. And right? you put those on felt balls. And he, all I did was I took a little glue gun, okay. dabbed on my, you know, put a little bit of glue this inside is so smart. of the acorn top. 
Yeah. And here you go. That's this as easy is as so it smart. is. Who looks at a felt ball and says that could be an acorn? Chris does. <laughs> Where do you get the acorn to uh, toppers? Just at the craft store? Well, you could, but oh. you could also find them on, a on the ground. I see. I see what you're doing. <laughs> right? So you definitely, you can find them at a craft store. You can find them online. Cute. Um, but you can definitely, most certainly, Forge. find them on your walk. Get out there and get them, right? <laughs> exactly. While well, you're looking at all the fall leaves. And just how you've draped <laughs> and layered, it just is oozing with that texture, Thank that you. contrast. It screams fall. I think it is all of about the layers definitely. totally yeah thank you what's coming up You're at the welcome. shop you know we have lots of things going on uh we have new machines that have just come out from our manufacturers hey. so if someone's thinking about a new machine for the holidays coming up then come see us uh we have our stores in both sandy and logan utah and we also have everything available 24 7 online at mygirlfriendsquiltshop.com awesome thanks for inspiring us you today bet. happy fall can i thanks. say it yes happy fall my it's butter time. friend very fun <laughs>
And I bet you guys can all relate to this is that uh, there's nothing worse than you're doing thread and you go to pull it and pop, pop, it, it just starts to um, come undone, right? And that can be very frustrating. So you're going to use dental floss instead. There is nothing stronger <laughs> unless, of course, like a carpet thread or something like that. But we've all got dental floss, right? So here you go. Very, very strong. It's not going to break. So um, as a quick review, when I sewed these two rectangles together, remember that you're sewing on the short sides, the short sides, and then you've created a tube and you turn it right side out and then you're going to take the dental floss and just weave it all the way along the top, pull all the way down the bottom, pull. And that is what's going to give you this. So this was my next step that I was showing Brooke, but we didn't have time to go into how to segment it. So you can see right here, I could play around with that a little bit so the floss wouldn't show, but it's not that huge of a deal because this would be on the bottom. This would be on the top. This is where you could roll a piece of felt if you wanted to, or um, as I showed in the video, I did cinnamon sticks, which also kind of has a, a fun look, feel, and smell, right? So um, it the other fun thing about this is that you can start out with any size you want. So when I did this one, I, I used one of these from Kimberbell, okay? And I was able to get two pumpkins out of one roll. Uh, and basically what I did was I just unrolled it, folded it in half, cut it on the fold, and then uh, folded it in half the opposite direction. So I ended up getting four rectangles that were all the same size out of one roll. So four rectangles out of one size will give you two pumpkins. All right. So, um, yes, Nancy. Yes. Uh, the, 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 the pumpkin in the Kimberbell event, Home Sweet Haunted Home, uh, was also done in the same method of doing two rectangles, sew the sides, you're sewing the short ends, and then you're cinching the top and the, and the bottom. The roll is 12 by 24, 12 inches by 24. Now, on this pumpkin, I used the sage velveteen. Okay, so don't be afraid to play with different colors of pumpkins. Um, you know, that more natural earthy look is really in right now. So you can see how beautiful that would become. All right, so I've cinched it up on both sides, right? And I've stuffed it. And now... I'm ready to start segmenting it. So you want um, like a yarn needle for this, something with a bigger eye so that your dental floss can go into it. And then um, I'm just going to start stitching. So I'm going to come up from the bottom and go through the top. Okay, I'm going to pull this down here. Let's see. I'm just coming up through the top. And this has to be a very, very long piece of, um, of dental floss, okay? So if you think that you don't have enough dental floss, or if you think you had enough dental floss, add some more because <laughs> you don't want to be stuck without it. All right, so I've gone from the bottom up to the top. And now what I'm going to do is just pull it over and see how I'm just pulling it over and I'm going to stick my needle through the bottom again and back up through the top again and pull, pull, pull. And you can see that it's starting to take shape. Now I'm not only going to do this once, but I'm going to do it twice. All right. So I'm coming up here and I'm going to go around over that same um, 
stitch that I had just done and pull it back up through the top again. All right, so with that wedge, I'm going to do it two times and I'm going to pull it really tight. If I don't pull it tight enough, then you're going to see the white dental floss, right? But if I pull it tight, then these pieces are going to start to come in and the dental floss will be covered. All right, so I've done it twice. Now I'm going to turn it to the opposite side and I'm going to do it again, but this time going abs uh uh, blah, blah, blah. what am I saying exactly opposite from what I just did all right so we're gonna pull this down I'm pulling the dental floss down and around I'm going from the bottom up to the top and pull this cinch it I'm going to do it one more time again over that same area and pull it again. And there we go. You don't even see the dental floss anymore, right? Okay, because I've cinched it really tight. Now I'm going to just do like a quarter turn and I'm gonna do it the opposite way. Again, going around the pumpkin, coming down and up. I should grab some scissors and cut off this excess that's kind of in my way, but I can do that later. And again, I'm going to go through that same channel and down and up once more. So are you getting the idea of what's happening here? Now I'll go across. I've done that twice. So I'm going to come to the opposite side, do it again. I'm just coming around the outside of the pumpkin, going into the bottom coming back through that same channel I had done before and up and around. Oops, there we go. All right, and now you can see that this pumpkin is starting to take shape. So I could do it in quadrants, um, you know, where I have four different parts of it, or I could take it another step further and now divide it into eights. And so I would just go again right through there bottom up and around again, bottom up, going around the same place twice, and then opposite and opposite. And that is all there is to it until you have something that looks like this. All right, so so pretty easy. Um, let's see, what questions do you have on that? Uh, Jules says she loves it and she's going to give it a try. Yay, I'm so glad, Jules. Yeah, and you know, on this one, th this is my Essex linen that I did. I could have certainly done the same thing and divide it into wedges. So I like that I have some varying you know, dimensions. I like the, the tall and poofy ones. I like the, the short and stouty ones. I love them all. <laughs> so, you know, just have fun with that. Now, the other item, oh, I should show you. How about this for a cute little pumpkin? He's so cute. <laughs> this is what I mean. You can do any size you want. Any size. All right. So the other thing that I had showed um, were the little uh, acorn garland. And I actually left that one at home. I, I can't find it. When I got to work, I went, where did I put my acorn garland? I don't know. So... I don't have the finished one to show you, but you did see it on the video, right? So um, the other thing that I showed was how to take these little wool balls. So this is, um, I'm using the Kimberbell wool felt balls um, that they have, and they have them in three different colors, right? So now obviously the red and white ones probably are not gonna work very well. The white ones would, I don't know if I've seen red acorns, but you know. Heck, I haven't seen pink acorns, but I think they'd be stinking cute. <laughs> so it's totally up to you, right? It doesn't matter. Um, but this is where I took this idea from. I actually, uh, I don't have acorn trees around me or else I, I would have absolutely done this myself, gone out on a walk and pull, pull, pulled some um, acorns, um, the tops off. Jennifer Hoffey, you've got acorn trees, I'm seeing. So 
save me some. <laughs> But if you have acorn trees in your area, you could do this. Or I did what some might call the cheater method, and I actually got on Amazon and found acorns um, that were fake acorns, right? But, and they actually came with a little fake acorn. It was like a plasticky acorn. And I was like, mm, no, I don't want that plasticky acorn. So all I did was I just pulled it apart, and then I had my little acorn tops. And then... All you have to do is add some hot glue. I'm just gonna put some hot glue in there and here you go. And then you just glue it on top and then you have these little acorns. <laughs> and uh, and then we did like a, a little garland of acorns. And they're so cute with these wool, with these wool balls. It's called scrub oak, Shauna said scrub oak. Okay, there you go. I, I shouldn't say acorn trees. It's like an oak, right? Okay, you have tons in Massachusetts. Um, we do have oak trees in, in in Utah. I just don't have any near me. So, yeah. Um, Janine says she can give them, give them to me by the boatload. <laughs> That's awesome. Because I actually... In fact, and Jennifer's our neighbor down south a little bit. Um, if you have bigger ones, I'm looking for for bigger caps than these um, because I actually, in fact, next month's Studio Five. I was thinking about kind of re going um, revisiting this idea, but now doing them bigger and doing them with fabric rather than so doing a mixture of the wool balls and the fabric acorn bottoms as well. I think that could be kind of fun. So, um, yeah. Uh, Judy, the top came from Amazon. And it, like I got a, a, like a bag of 100 or so acorns and they were full on acorns, not real. They're, they're the fake ones. But, and then I just pulled the, the bottoms out and then replaced it with the wool. I think is kind of fun. So again, and you're just taking um, hot glue for that. So great question. Um, Cheryl says the squirrels steal them. <laughs> there you go. Pine cone tree. I've got a whole scrub oak forest, Kenzie said. I don't know. Here you go. Oh, Janine said, let me check for the bigger ones at the park down below me. I would love that. I, yeah, I am looking for bigger tops or caps. Do they call them caps? Acorn caps? I don't know. But I think it'd be really cute. So I'm going to put the, the pumpkins together with some pine cones and with acorns. And I think it would just be such a, a pretty fall tablescape. So I hope you learned something new um, and maybe were inspired to try something. Um, maybe you've done these before. Maybe you've done a, a, the pumpkins before, but perhaps in a different way. So kind of fun. Kathy asked me, what did you use for the garland to string them? I used baker's twine. Mm -hmm. Or you could use um, uh, jute. Jute would be another way. You would have to definitely have a larger I needle to do that, but you definitely can. Judy said, oak trees in Wisconsin. There we go. And the acorns have worms in them. Oh, that's no fun, Judy. <laughs> All right. So, um, yeah, that's something new to get you excited about for the fall season. You know, it's starting to get a little cooler outside, which is really nice, right? And it gives you a chance to just kind of get excited for fall. So I love starting this time of year, starting to put together these fall projects because then you can just, you know, get gets you all cozy inside, right?